Well, that, that means we're going. I want to call this uh, March 20th, 2024 meeting to order. Angela will lead us in. Go ahead. Angela will lead us to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Eddie? I mean, you're not Eddie, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got one and nine. You don't have to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the real property exonerations. Second. All in favor? Uh, I'll move to approve the, com the combined lots, which are owned by the same. People. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I cannot write to talk at the same time. Right. Okay. Uh, I moved to approve payroll for April 5th and 19th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We had some. I can remember. Oops. Ruth, anything come up to you? Would you like to say that again? Anything come up that you uh, questioned? I had got my notes from the last meeting in my box. There was something on the. Hold on. <clears throat> I don't think we printed all of them because we're off. Well, I think we need to stand down on one of these reimbursements until we can get more information because. I'm not sure some of these expenses are ones that we can cover under the fire levy. Maybe we can go into executive session in a little bit when it makes sense to because okay. our lawyers online. Okay. We can call him and ask him and maybe we can get it through. But okay. So you want to hold hold off on the uh, fire. Could we please? Yes, I don't mind. Do you want to approve the rest of them? Well, we we'll just do them all at once. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay. All right. I'll motion to approve the AM and PM minutes for mm -hmm. March the 13th. Second. Action. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. State settlements. Aye. Make a motion to approve the estate settlements. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's also a producer. That falls under <clears throat> Mr. Taylor, Taylor's yes. category. Well, this isn't to a point of oh, approving his finding. Okay. Michelle, do you, you said you have some information about this. Yeah, um, basically there was a question because there was someone who was pretty deceased in the will. Um, there was some question about how the real estate interest should be divided. Uh, some of the heirs thought that the math should go one way and some of the heirs thought the math should go the other way. So that's a tissue. The very last page of his finding is what the last few pages are kind of where he showed in the will what he read and the same thing that we read. Lisa and I came to the same conclusion. And then I was probably should be Not now. This is the family that's here. All right, I move that we uh, accept the recommendations of the fiduciary commissioner in the estate of Thomas Wallace Wendell Jr. Second. All in favor? Aye. Well, we all have to sign this.
All right, budget. Ruth? Your budget is done. Yes. With, I think, everything y'all requested. So it allowed for you to give everybody $2,000 across the board. And we moved some of like materials and supplies over to Cole Severance, part of the Sheriff's Department, since we went ahead and moved six deputies. And Mike picked like a good, the Sheriff picked a good combination of the highest cost, lowest cost to average it out. So. And the plan is to try to take six off every year until the levy yes. cycle is completed. Yes. The next and four years take six off a year. So basically, y'all have to sign every tab on there, and Michelle has to sign up as big. Shells. We tried time. to put big green tape over the one so you won't sign in her spot. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it's a lot big of big signatures. green tape that says Michelle. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, that's clever too because you know I would have signed. I've been instructed to remove the tape. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are there's the sign here? Okay, no. Yeah, y'all are the sign here, so all three commissioners have to sign every one of those sheets. Can we approve it and just sign it? Yeah, yeah, because if not, you will be there. Yeah, no, I yeah. Know. Just do that if you don't mind. Nope. I don't mind. Yeah. Um, if you want to give these to Michelle, it looks like all of these are hers. Okay. And then I have the fire budgets copies for y'all. Go ahead. I, I was wanting to mention this. Since Fedville came in, I don't know how the other two commissioners fell out. Since Fedville came in and requested us to try to approve theirs prior to or with our budget, I was wanting to see if it's okay if we approve Fedville's uh, requested budget. Absolutely. Well, I think it would be optimal to do them all at the same time. I realize we gave them short notice this year about a, the deadline. So I do want to, I do think it's a good idea to go ahead and. Well, they requested that. Yeah, to do they, they, yeah they, have to, they have to do the same budget process. And they presented, and, and I'll be honest with you, I mean, we, we should have had all of them in and presented, to be honest with you, but we give them time. Well, there's only. Next we year, have a lot of them. Next year, we should do them all at once and, and you know. Along with our budget. Yeah, along with our budget. I think it's the only way we should have been doing it. Anyway. Since the agenda says budget, we could go ahead and put the fire one underneath it. We'd be no issues. Yeah, it just says, but it's it's generic. So you're, that's your general county and your coal severance budget. And that would be um, a fire budget, however you want to word it. And then we also have some other funding requests y'all might want to consider. They're not included in the budget request, but there's stuff that comes up before like that June, July, and they're smaller expenses. I made copies if y'all want to look at those and maybe put them on a meeting in April. Okay. Go ahead. Move to I'll make a motion to approve Fedville's fire budget. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you approve general accounting and call severance? Not yet. Should have done that first, but I'm going to approve general accounting. Say it again, Ruth. General County and Cole Severance. General County and Cole Severance budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I've done this for four years. I should know that. Well, I wanna I wanna recognize Ruth for all the hard work and Gia that they have put into this Six. budget because it is a nightmare. And they did it at the time that the auditor was here, which is a double nightmare. And you know, we're getting emails from her at 5 a.m. because she's working on all of this stuff. Um, all day long and has to do for other work at 5 a.m. and on weekends. So um, thank you. She always does well and puts up with me. And that's what I'm with Tom. Well, yeah. that, I mean, for that, we, I'm there's sorry, no I'm way to, there's no saying. way to compensate you for that. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way to compensate that. All right, Ruth. All right, uh, we don't need to sign this. That would be the extension on Oh, yeah. Two. So, this is part of their pre budget. It goes back to the review. It's just Tom saying to the other guys there. Yeah, we'll probably miss a couple of signatures, but we'll get them. Catch them. The <laughs> <day. laughs> we always do. I guess it really is Michelle, isn't it? For the first thing, election official lists. You want to show me? Yeah, that's me. 
<laughs> well, that whole first half was Michelle. I think you guys did. Yeah, it is the song yes. stuff that's published. So uh, we we have a better list than we did a week ago. Yeah. Um, we're up to 100 and I think we're like 100, almost 170, 160 some. We added, there's four people we added since I gave this list to over a cookie packet. Yeah. Um, so we're getting there. Most, for the most part, the only issue at this point right now is there's a couple precincts that are down that I would put the someone in. Um, the valley is very low on people. Like we right now only have three people confirmed for Montgomery, for the city of Montgomery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need at least one more. But most of these precincts could could work with the four people they have in them. Um, my only concern is we have absolutely no alternates. So if someone hits the flu the day before the election, mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. in the primary, we had a lady that went into early labor. Well, then we had a whole family that didn't show up, right? Yeah, yeah, we had that too. But yeah, there's stuff that legitimately can happen that, you know, people aren't able to after they said they're going to. So, and at what point can you not appoint them? Like, what could you say? I mean, we can keep, at this point, once this list is approved and we've gone through the executive committee lists, it's up to my office to appoint. And we can appoint people up until. We'll have a class sometime the week before the election. So as long as they can come in and get training, we're good. Um, we would like to have more notice than that, but that's how it works. Um, the only other thing that I really need, and we will need to do maybe next meeting, because I did not put David Bennett. We, we have a Republican emergency absentee ballot commissioner. David Bennett, he's done it several years. I'm sure he's willing to serve again. He's never told me that. We do not have a Democrat. Um, no one was nominated. The, the person that they nominated last time did not show. I called them. So we need, we need a Democrat or nonpartisan. That can be nonpartisan. That'd be opposite party for that particular part. What is it for? The emergency absentee. So they have to be available on election day to go to the hospital or go to somebody's home or go to the nursing home. Remember, there was controversy. Yeah, last I was time. just saying, like, if you, I just figured you should elaborate. So, because not everybody knows what that means. Yeah. So, what that is, is if someone has to request an emergency absentee ballot, meaning they didn't request one during the regular point, then they got too sick to go to the polls, they can request one of those. And that is, um, and then those two commissioners go to them, to the hospital, to their their house if they're homebound or to the nursing home and can do their administer their ballot to them. And so they have to be office party because you have to have office party people do everything. Those people get paid uh $75 if they get called out and then plus mileage. So they get $75 for the day of collection day and then whatever their mileage is to from the courthouse to wherever they have to go. How often? We can, yeah, we probably should, because um, I didn't put ben David on this list because I didn't have a Democrat. Um, How often do they actually go out? What we try to do, what they typically we do is, we've had one each time we've had an election. We had one in the primary, we had several in the generals. This last time a hospital had about three or four. We try to make it one trip, or like make it all one thing. So wait until they have to have that application in by noon on election day so at noon, mm -hmm. these two people would come to the court or maybe a little before would come here get the addresses of and people who would they have to go see and then go and do those trips sometimes it's two or three i think in the general they had to go to someone's home and then they had to go to the hospital mm -hmm. so so right now you just need us to approve the Ballots for uh, poll workers? Yeah, the election. Okay, so I move that we approve the list. Second. All in favor? All in favor. And then the, the also move that we approve the Republican ballot commissioner for the Republican the ballot commissioner. I don't know why they use the same terms. For Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll just have the Democrat on for next, next meeting. Are you, when do you have to have that done by? Because you know we're not meeting again until April seventh, sixteenth. We um, have to do 
special meeting. We shouldn't. I mean, I don't know when we have to actually have them named. I just, I was, I think today was the last day I could ask you for how many I needed, but we'd already done that with the previous order back in March or back in earlier in March or February. So I'd have to look at code to see if there's a particular time. There's probably not. Like if the, again, it's the same thing. If the executive committees don't give me a name, then at some point it becomes our responsibility to appoint someone. So. Okay. Well, just let us know what you need if it comes. Okay. You need us to do something. Thank you. Else. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. So Mike's here for number ten. Number ten. Good morning, commissioners. First of all, thank you um, for the raises you gave to all employees here. That's awesome. Seeing the budget, thank y'all for that. James Shuff um, has been a part-time animal control officer for a while. Of course, you know that I'm down one. Um, I'm asking he, it was in the budget for him to have two full-time, and i like to go ahead and move him over to the full-time staff, and he can start working today. He, I mean, he's been on part-time work Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It just, I would have a full staff for him. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yep. Uh, good day. You do both. Can you take me to ready for the uh, new ship? I know you said 10 or something. Yeah, they'll be here. They're supposed to be here at 10. So okay. I don't have one for the judges. Just take me one okay. page or something. Well, I just realized Wes is not here and he won't be here for the celebrate funding. So he's that in that. Uh, you know. Yeah, I know what it is. Um, I, I think we can do that without him. Um, okay. It's, I mean, it's it's a grant, right? No. It's the cell phone. Yeah, it's a cell phone exploitation software is what it right. is. Right. So, yeah, on that, Allison, just let you know, it's not a grant. We used to like allocate money to a certain ones, and another department takes certain ones to pay for it. And it started getting more expensive, more expensive. But then when Wes went through and checked how many downloads were done, the majority of downloads were done through our detective bureau and our and then the drug task force also was a sex crimes and stuff like that. So, so we're talking about having getting it ourselves rather than passing it out. No, I yeah. think or, I don't think that's where you're going to go. He, they just asked in the county commission City Council is so forth and on the way. I understood the last time, but I don't want to speak with Wes. He might have changed up on that. I don't know. So he's working on it and he said there's different packages. Yes. Because I think it's between fifteen and twenty five thousand dollars. But he said there's so many downloads. And he said if you want to purchase more later, you can. But I think what he was recommending was start at the lower level. And my my suggestion, because it's already ran out. It ran out March 1st and he didn't realize that he thought he had to the end of March would be approved according to Wes's suggestion. And uh, whatever he is suggesting. Yeah, because I think it's over 15,000. But I also know they that he said there's several people that need it and they can't yeah. get the info they need right now. I don't want to hold it up. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's a it's a it's probably the most important tool that they use these days. Yeah. I don't mind go if you're talking about going to minimal amount of stuff with what I'll just go with as he recommends. Okay. I mean, you don't have the info, he can always send it to you. But well it's it's but it's probably less than twenty five, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, so let's why don't we approve up to twenty five um, and then if we have to have an emergency meeting to adjust for a special meeting, I'll let you know will. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Brett. So I move that we approve up to twenty five thousand for the Cellbrite uh, subscription. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Um, we have that with, oh, we do. We say here, Wilbur, or whoever did this proclamation. Um, every year in April, it's a proclamation for fair housing month. And then we approve. Second. Proclaim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is the building appeal board. We haven't had one, and we need one. Amen. Um, <laughs> so, 
I guess my thoughts, if you were going to ask how many more people. How many boards? How many board members? Board mm -hmm. members. I think we have need to have uh, five, right? Yeah. And we've identified what we. Well, one of the gentlemen I talked to the other day said he, I, I think he would be on it. I just didn't talk to him and let him approve him. We haven't went through the process yet. So why don't we today establish the board and then do appointments in April? Does that I, work? I don't mind doing that. Good. And that'll give us time to identify five people five yep. okay. and, and put the word out to Amy. If you can put it on our Facebook page and website. Mm -hmm. It's on the website. I'll, Is it all right? Yeah, I'll post it on the Facebook. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And anybody you know, yeah, and I'll, word out. I'll get Amy with it because there's certain qualifications. They okay, have. yeah, just yeah. let's let's get that out there. So yeah, uh, I'll have Alan try to. I move that we reestablish the building appeals board as required by code. Second, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, are we able to write that down for April? Yeah, the one that's coming up. So this is the grant application for community connections. Teresa had another engagement and didn't be here, but um, it's basically you guys approval that she apply, and then you have to sign all this stuff. And I'm voting to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jeff Proctor texted me yesterday and said he wasn't going to be able to make it today. He's going to come in and make it today. There's and on this. Well, that's too bad. So he resigned from the um, Urban Renewal Authority, and he has been the chair of that for a long time, done a lot of work to try to sell Hill Creek Park. Um, so first, I'm going to move that we accept his resignation from the board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I move that we approve uh, the very well-written eloquent letter that Amy put together for us for Jeff's service, thanking him. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, we approved the grant. Yeah. Did you not? Yeah. yeah. I miss that. Yeah. Okay. You were shuffling. No. Yeah. And Tom made the motion. Put it off. <laughs> Remember, I can hear now. That's a huge difference. Number seven. Just ask for letters. Yeah, we've already approved these, but we have the move to officially approve them today because we have put them on the agenda. Uh -huh. um, yeah. It's just support letters for Senator Manchin's earmark grants for Anstead and Montgomery, two projects, and or one project in Anstead and two in Montgomery that we discussed at last week's meeting but hadn't noticed yet. So maybe we approve. So I have to do no pro tongue. No pro tongue. Yeah. All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, so you guys have talked with Allison and Laura about that letter. Yeah. And she sent a draft this morning, but I know it's Allison, this Allison will <laughs> slaughter it. So it's a letter to the DOH about the handicap accessibility at the Tokyo Town Park. Yeah. So I mean you could approve it. After in in uh, <laughs> yeah in, in <laughs> concept and then let me <laughs> circulate it yeah all right well we can <laughs> we did discuss it and it, it yeah. I think it's an important letter to um DOH to try to get some things repaired in Oak Hill so um, there's ADA accessibility to its parks so I move that we approve the letter and concept with my edits that I will circulate second all in favor aye, aye. They won't be substantive, they'll just be. Okay. Um, this is the letter mm -hmm. to Southern Soil. And this is about the multiple projects. You guys asked Wes to draft a letter mm -hmm. um, about a lot of the creek issues. Speaking of creek issues, we got an invoice today, apparently the one in is it Canelton? Yeah, the, Tether's Creek. Yeah, has been done. Oh, good. Like he removed those trees. So okay. I've already edited this slide. I had any advance. The motion to approve it. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Um, Aye. And I, I want to tell you, Angela and I have worked on this for four years, trying to get creeks in our area taken care of, and Southern Soil keeps pushing it back on the back burn. Um, I was able to talk to Commissioner. 
Kent Linhart. Um, and he would like also like a copy of the letter so that he can work it from his side back. Okay, well, if that's if that's true, then why don't we, Amy, could you add the, and then we'll sign it again. I you want him to CC on the bottom? Yeah, CC on the bottom of the Commissioner of Agriculture. So we'll just hold this. And uh, thank you. Yeah, re-sign that one here in the um, is Leslie Taylor on there? Yes. Is that what she's Yeah, this is her resolution number six for Armstrong housing water drink. Water drink. Taylor? Good morning. Morning. Before you today, you have uh, resolution number six. This is related to the CDBG grant that the commission got on behalf of the Armstrong PSD um, Palton water tank project. Originally, this was the deep water and Palton upgrade project, but we did have to pivot that to just be the Palton water tank upgrade. Um, the Total amount of this resolution is $2,614.30. And this is six invoices from Region 4 Planning and Development Council from August 2023 to January, the end of January 2024. Any questions, Commissioner? Now I'll make a motion to approve the CGB grant. Resolution number six for Armstrong PSD. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Hey, Leslie, we're going to put um, those issues of, that you've been emailing us about with projects 18 and 19 for New Haven and um, can off all on the uh, on a future agenda, probably on the 16th of April um, to discuss and get a full update. OK, and um, I would encourage I sent out an invitation yesterday related to Canal Falls PSD. If at all possible, it would be beneficial for you all to attend the call that's March 25th at three o'clock. State and FEMA representatives will be available to discuss the Candleton Hollow sewer issue. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Okay. again. March 25th. 25th. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. You too. You think I'm just saying I'm going to take a photo of that issue. Number 13 million. So this is reappointment of our designing appeals members for Dan Hill, William Hughes, John Hoffman, and William White. They all expire January 1st. Okay. Um, various years. So Dan Hills expires in 2025. Hughes expires in January 1st, 2026. Hoffman expires January 1st, 2026. And Mr. Lights expires on January 1st, 2027. I move we approve. Okay, I have a question first, Allison. Oh. If Dan is on Board of Zoning Appeals, how can he be on the Building Appeals Board too? They're completely in different they're, that, The Board of Zoning is under zoning. The Building Appeals is under the building. Okay, I so just wanted to clarify that. Okay, thank you. You are. Yeah, if there were an issue, we, we could resign. And then, okay. you know, once we do those appointments, yeah. that, that's a good point. I wasn't. Did we do it? I can't remember. Yeah. We approved, right? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. So we got it. And then you have to sign up for the chairs. Okay. All, All right. right. The last thing is the discussion we say on March. 27th meeting. Well, I think that we've handled all of our, our budgets, all of our requests after this afternoon. Uh, I would motion to cancel the meeting for the 27th. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Not I mean, I expect it's possible we'll have to have a special meeting sometime. For I think a couple quick things. things. Yeah, for the support letters and maybe. Um, Sorry, Joe. Yeah, I'm trying to fix that. Maybe we add emergency ballot commissioner on that. Like maybe the person. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to do by Zoom because I'll be out of town. All right, so 9 30, we got uh, bid, open. yeah, bid openings. 
Try to stay on time here. Sign all these. This is for the judicial annex roof replacement and the masonry repair on the memorial building. Long last. Two for the annex. Yeah, so here's the two for the annex. Sure is it this. time for me to open this up? Yeah, it's 9 30. <laughs> I've got 9 30. Just making sure because the last time I had it ripped open. Yeah, ripped open. Really. Okay, I have a bid from Tri-State Roofing and Sheet Metal Company of West Virginia for $122,712. That's for the annex, right? This is for the annex roof, yes. Tri-State Roofing and Sheet Metal Company of West Virginia. 122. 122,712, right, John? 122,712. Okay, and... I found the company name on this. Okay, and we have a bid from Sutter Roofing and Metal Company in Clarksburg mm -hmm. for $84,400. Yeah, big guess difference. The next step is to get somebody to look at them and make sure they're. Yeah. Yeah. I'm opening a bid from Keystone Masonry Restoration in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. This is the only bid on the Memorial Building Masonry. And this is just the library side, right? I mean, part and not the complete library side. Right. Yeah. This is where the yeah, okay. Um, so the bid is eighty two thousand nine hundred and twenty nine dollars even. Can you repeat that? Eighty two thousand nine hundred and twenty nine. I am. I am shocked. It's a lot better than I thought. I was a little concerned about. Yeah, yeah, I was too. We're going to have to have that one reviewed too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really... and, uh, All right. Good. Well, now we have time for executive session over. You want to? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So I move that we go into executive session to get legal advice on a couple of the. Uh, Reimbursements that I have questions about. I guess I'm not prepared. And um, yeah, he's on. He's on there. And Michael, we'll just call you from in the um, Bruce office. If I recall, meeting back to order. We just uh, got out of executive session. We had some advice for attorney, Miss Taylor. You can get. And no decisions remain in executive session. We resolved my concerns, so I'm going to go ahead and move that we approve the. Uh, vouchers and invoices as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I guess it's uh, Matt, Mr. Ford. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to cover a couple of topics this morning. First is the uh, what <laughs> What we've been referring initially to as the former Rainhill landfill or dump. It wasn't a uh, a permitted landfill. So technically a, a dump that was used by the town of Rainhill for 
20 or 30 years, about 20 or 30 years ago, before the Greenbrier County landfill was opened, it um, was used up until uh, just for the town of Greenell, but it, it is in Fayette County, about two miles from the lumber mill on Snake Island Road. And um, we're proposing the uh, the Snake Island Recreation Area. It's a five-acre piece of property. Um, it's not what you typically, if you go there, you would probably be surprised that it was a landfill. It's because it's, it's overgrown. Uh, a lot of it's capped. Um, and it, it doesn't have an, an odor like a typical landfill what would. But we've been working with the, the DEP to do site assessment. And we've completed uh, the phase one. And uh, that was done before New River Gorge Regional Development Authority acquired the property to facilitate redevelopment. And Andy Davis is here to talk about their involvement quickly. Um, We've, uh, we've done the phase one, we've started the phase two, so we've done some soil borings and the maps that are in this packet. Let's see, we need the fourth page show um, all those maps from four on, show a site, show site assessment work that's been completed. And uh, thankfully the, the site is not that contaminated. We, uh, we have some soil gas sampling to do and some surface water and some sediment sampling. Um, I'm not gonna say we're going overboard, but we are being um, extra cautious with the assessment because the, the goal was to have recreational use. Um, look on the third page of the packet. I've showed you all this map before, but I pointed out where the landfill is located. So it's one that Yellow line about two miles from Raynell. As you can see, the yellow line is in Fayette County. And um, currently, it's, it was the only piece of property available on the whole Meadow River Rail Trail corridor that was available for redevelopment. Um, it's, a, it's an upstream point, so we make want to make sure that it's not contributing to contamination that's going into the river um, and impacting the rest of the recreational corridor. We want to make sure that if we put a kayak ramp or camping areas that we're not exposing the public to any contamination that's uh, at harmful levels. So we're going through all that process. Andy, do you want to talk about the New River Gorge's interest in the problem? Sure. I'd be glad. Hey everyone, Andy Davis from the New River Gorge Regional Development Authority. That reached out to us uh, a few years ago now about this piece of property. And gave us essentially the same rundown that you just received and painted the picture of what this site could be. Um, we were familiar with the Meadow River Rail Trail project and it was pretty easy to see the value of this piece of property as it relates to not only the rail trail, but the vision of the Meadow River Recreational Corridor, with this being an access point for really every kind of trail user. Um, understanding that the town of Raynell uh, has put work towards river access in the flat water area between town and this uh, piece of property also adds value to this as a boat access uh, area above the, the higher class rapids uh, that are downstream, but it would also serve as an access point for those boaters, those skilled boaters who want to put on the river there. So this had a very high uh, redevelopment value, as you know, that's what we ask uh, when folks come to us with redevelopment projects uh, defined in use, and we had it. So uh, understanding that NRGRDA has played a role with pieces of property uh, that have brownfields contamination um, currently playing that role uh, in other counties. Matt asked us if we would take the ownership of a property being as it is in Fayette County. Uh, we said yes, and we have a pending application to the US EPA for a remediation grant, uh, $500,000, uh, as much as we could get. 
um, but to go towards not only the remediation, but uh, complementary um, capping toward the redevelopment of these intended uses. So we have stakes in the project. We see it as a, a great value to uh, not only Fayette County and Greenbrier County, but really to the region uh, with understanding that the Meadow River has world-class uh, outdoor recreation for hikers, climbers, bikers, and boaters. And we should know later this year about the receipt of that grant, in which case we will move forward with that as the uh, as the recipient of the grant. Typically, those grants are announced in the summer, and then uh, they vary the date. Sometimes it's early summer, sometimes it's late summer. But should know soon when that grant's awarded. Thanks, Andy. Good thing. But the ask is, um, so as I mentioned, all the previous site assessment work was done under contract with the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. And my company, Greenbrier Environmental Group, is also the Brownfields contractor for the state. Um, when we were looking at sites to use Fayette County's site assessment grant, um, this is one that came to mind. So, I mean, really no pressure on Fayette County Commission. If you decide not to fund this, the DEP can fund it. Um, this, the Fayette County Commission has over three hundred thousand dollars remaining in their brownfields assessment grant, and um, EPA is hoping you get to start spending that in quick order. They want other people to, you know, all grantees are being pushed mm -hmm. to spend money so that you can apply for more. You have to have a certain amount spent so you can apply for more funding. Um, so we're looking. I put a cost estimate together. It's probably around um, forty thousand dollars to do the additional site assessment that's needed. We're taking a lot of surface water samples, a lot of sediment samples, and then the uh, the analysis that we're running is pretty extensive. Again, just to make sure that the work that we're doing um, shows that we're not putting public at harm by using this property. And again, to make sure that this property isn't contributing to contamination upstream of everything we're trying to do on the Meadow River. I don't know. I have a question though. Matt, okay. on sites 33 and 39, both read high lead. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us an idea of how you make sure that those read better the next time that a bore is done in that area? Do you excavate everything around that area? Or yeah. How is it done? So, um, See which ones that is. Yeah, 33 and 39. Um, yeah, but like they're over industrial, those will be excavated. Okay. So um, that goes into the site reuse planning. Like there's, a, if there's an area that needs excavated as close as those are to the creek, those make, it makes logical sense that that might worry be where you put the, the river access point because you've got to excavate that anyways. Right. So is this part of the five hundred thousand dollars that it's not? It's not. That's uh, what they applied for was cleanup funds. So what what all the site assessments doing is getting it to a point that if they're awarded, we put it in what's called the voluntary remediation program. All the site assessment work will be done, and then all their cleanup funds can be can go towards uh, the excavation of whatever contamination you find. Um, capping to cover up whatever needs to be covered up. And then um, again, that's where we get creative because if there's like the, the samples that are, are hot that you see help us out because it justifies the excavation, then you have to stabilize it. Well, then you can get creative and that excavation and stabilized excavation becomes your river access point. So, uh, but again, that's it's around $40,000 for the work that needs done. And that includes one round of groundwater sampling. We we may ask for more depending on how Fayette County's grant goes to do additional groundwater sampling because the DEP requires eight rounds before you can close out a site. It's the current guidance. Right now we have uh, two rounds on part of the wells and one for the rest. So we've got some additional sampling towards the end. But again, no pressure with Fayette County Commission. Um, the cleanup grant can cover the additional groundwater monitoring. The DEP has funds that can cover the groundwater monitoring. Uh, long story short, there's lots and lots of money in groundwater development right now. 
because of the federal. So what it's not, it wouldn't if the commission doesn't decide to do this, it doesn't put the project off in any time in that. It does not. Um, what's advantageous for Fayette County is again you've got that large grant to use to go towards Brownfields projects, and this is the Brownfields project in Fayette County. And the DEP is asking us to spend money because yeah. we have not yet. And this is a shovel ready project. How much did we approve last meeting? Do you remember? You approved for um, us just to do the asbestos, and then he was going to come and present about Raynell, and then we were going to talk about structural assessments okay. and how much those cost. Yeah, well, on the asbestos, you've probably got about twenty to thirty thousand dollars allocated in asbestos inspections. I don't know yet on the structural amounts, but a very small portion of that that large grant you have has been allocated. And when is the the grant uh, supposed to be due? It's been. It finishes up in twenty five. Yeah. So basically, we have a year and a half to yeah. spend that money. Yeah, and I most of those grants, um, the max was used to be two hundred thousand, but with all the uh, infrastructure money that's out. Um, they raised the limit, so you've got more than usual. But I can tell you, most most counties and these have trouble spending the two hundred thousand they used to get. Um, so if if this is not, when's the next one you have to be put that has to be put in? Let's say we spend this in twenty twenty five. When you put in for the next grant, if if we get it spent, I'm not sure how it works. That you can, I I don't know what the time frame is that you can. Um, if you're still, I think the last year you can apply for a, a cleanup grant. The last year of your assessment they, they, grants. And they want to see that you've spent a certain percentage. It. Yeah. Spent this is what I'm getting at. The next question. Next question is in the 25 is mm -hmm. not spent in 2026. Do you file in 2026 for 2027? Yes. I, or would you file in 2025 for 2026? Well, and it overlap like if that. You haven't spent it. You, you have, have to wait. Yeah. You have to wait. Yeah. So we would have to wait another year if it's exactly. not spent. So yeah, file for actually, an extension on your current grant. Or file for an extension. So it could put us out a year. Another year, two years. Another yeah. two years if the money's not spent. And that's where I was going with my question. Right. Yeah, then that was my my thought on bringing yeah, I mean, that to you. That's the reason I was, you know, I don't have a problem with it because if it's not spent, we can uh, we can waste it. It would be a problem refile for a grant, or even if we refile for it being accepted, we would be two years out from it from being approved. To spend money correct yes. matt did i i miss did you say how many acres are here five there's five total acres mm -hmm. okay it was pretty affordable when it was acquired it was free <laughs> 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 it's a pretty deal. that's very generous <laughs> of you guys <laughs> and, and i want to and you're the heck of the business guy yes but i want to let the commission know that's one of the reasons i i'm i'm for spending it because if we have an issue and this is not spent, we'll have a problem refiling and we may be out two years of, of being able to see, having something approved and then getting that grant approved where we won't have any money to be yeah. able to build money. When will we have more information on the structural? Any day now. Okay, so he's reached out. Maybe yeah. for, could you be ready by April 16th for our meeting? Could be. Yeah, I've sent the information to a couple of different consulting firms that do the structural engineering work. To get uh, to get quotes from them, so I could know how much that would cost. Um, but yeah, oh, and and no rush on this. We're still working through the uh, the last phase. We're working on the report now. So, and then we have to put in the work plan. Um, another thing to add on to that, I mentioned the DEP has they've got close to three million dollars, and they're also having trouble spending their money. Um, so if it gets to the point where Fayette County does spend all of your money and a site comes up that needs to have assessed, we can just ask the DMP to pay for it. So I just don't want this to be the same way of the REIT grant. Yeah, we, I we, agree. Do you still, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Agree. But, I agree. But I think we can wait until we get the structural presentations in April to make the decisions about how to spend it. Though. Okay, that's fine. With five acres and only two hot spots, I don't see it. For a landfill? Yeah, I was. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, that was an eye opener. And then uh, something else to bring to your attention along these lines, um, the AML grant funding's out uh, that you can apply for. So be thinking about what you want to use that money for. 
basically if it's a coal impacted community or area with an old AML site near it, Bay County, essentially. Does it has to be adjacent to it? Okay. Is there any limits on the being away from it? Is a road, there get a distance, road possible. connection? Okay. He's kind of filled us in on yeah. um, some of those um, errors it. of... <laughs> I've seen it used <laughs> for... Uh, one example was a tiny home manufacturing project and the AML site was almost a mile away. So, mm. wow. yeah. And the project that's down my yeah, <laughs> the project that's always in the back of my mind for Fayette County because there are AML, AML sites right there, and that's a big recreation area that's building up is our landfill. Um, doing an assessment on it as well. So yeah, yeah. just mm -hmm. and it's and then that would just help move that along. Yeah. So you just want to postpone this to the sixteenth? Is that what you're? Yeah. Well, and then one other grant that's available is. Uh, Transportation alternative grants are coming soon. I found out from the DOH. So AML is due by the end of uh, May. To the horse, to the horses count. <laughs> For transportation. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Andy, Andy's telling me they do. So yeah, yeah. So it's one of them. Horses on the Better River Rail Trail, maybe as we speak. That would be cool. I saw bikes down there the other day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Okay, hey, we need a motion to move that. Do we need a motion to move it? Because it was just a presentation. We can make the decisions. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, actually, Deb, my structural assessments on there too. So I'll go ahead and move it. I'll postpone it to the 16th of April. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the leadership group is ready to come now. We need 15 seats. But, so, um, Angela's making people move. I'm just moving people out. Of yeah. But I think it'd be a good opportunity to like municipal people. Whether 12, 14, 15. I mean, I see. You got two on that. Yeah, yeah two or three. Yeah. And then we've got some seats over here. Yeah. We used to have extra chairs, but I don't know where they went to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's let the kids get in first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are they coming from? Okay. Hey, they, that was really are they, good. Are they coming in? <laughs> yeah, he's bringing them down. They're in Judge Blake's. He's bringing Fridley is bringing them down right now. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of it if you want to do contact information. I probably do, but I'm going to take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next I don't know. Well, I'm not going to go to the next one. Really? Madibri, Oak Hill, Smithers. Well, Smithers is being put over. Because she can't appear in person. Right. So, yeah, it'll be Madibri, Oak Hill, Smithers. Oak Hill, Smithers. Oh, he's speaking for me. Yeah. Okay. And then Montgomery, the Mount Hope's here. I see Mikey came in. Yes, Mikey. Okay. Yeah, but 
Yeah, but it's one microphone it fits right mm -hmm. in one of those and it, yeah. you can stand in the corner of our council chamber and talk at the level i'm talking right now and hear it just like you're speaking right in the microphone i tell you what i wanted i want to be that i want to carry your face back well my thought is either it would shut up right up or someone like me is probably forget and say something well i just gave room to contact the company 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 and uh yeah. They've got some cameras that that microphone actually control facing where it hears yeah. the sound. Yeah. Well, that's so a good thing. So let's see if we're looking at actually getting the thing that we should hear. Yeah. We got the microphone now. So the next step will be up there. I would love to have something like that. We're going to get that. You got to keep looking like you know how it works. That microphone is great. Yeah, let's know how it records like when you do your YouTube because I'd be afraid to have so much competing. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's a, I have a quote. So, like, for example, like, claws didn't last so long. Well. We like, never have that in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not Ruth, Ruth, I have a quote from that company. They're from <laughs> they get something new. I think that's what those guys came and gave me a quote for. So, I'll, I'll look through my email. All right. Mr. Hayden? We got two from an elevator. Okay. But we can talk to us about keeping things rolling. But to you. Um, so what I thought we'd do today, thank you for um, and indulging us, Ruth. Thanks for setting us up and really sitting about me about them. And if it's okay with you, I mean, everything's about me, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're going to tell you a story about um, what we've done so far this year and what we're going to be doing, and then hopefully um, they have a minute to ask some questions. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. Do you want them to come up here or do you need to pass the microphone? They are, they are, um, they should be practiced at, um, do they need to speak in the mic for the, for the, for the, the online? Okay. Mm -hmm. No, they can come up. Okay. Except for the crutches kid. <laughs> okay, who's first? I found the kid. They just found the one. And there's the crutches kid. That's how he worked <laughs> it. <laughs> you can tilt it down towards yourself if you want. Might be easy to just hold it. I want to your address in there. Hi, my name is Ashton Prince. I go to Oak Hill High School and I'm part of Leadership Fayette County. I'd like to talk about the first session that we got to have. So we started by meeting together at the Fayette Institute of Technology and I got to experience and meet everybody that was in the program. Now I got to meet Jeff. I got to meet Alex, which is our lead mentor. We then got to go to ACE and we had breakfast there. After that, we had met some of the um, people who worked there and we did some team building exercises since we didn't really know everybody who was in the program at first. We decided that would be a good idea to get to know everybody and figure out like how to work in a team. We then went to their um, tree obstacle course um, center where we had the opportunity to experience that where some people might not be a huge fan of heights or anything. We just put everyone in a different situation to where we had to just control ourselves and be calm. And after that, they provided um, lunch for us and we went back to the Fayette Institute of Technology. Thank you. Keep it to the next person. <laughs> 
Hi, my name is Delaney Hames. I am part of the Leadership Fayette County class this year, and I'm going to talk about our second session. So we met at FIT again. We've been doing that before every single session, and we took a bus over to AOTG, and we met Dr. Mandy over there. She has a PhD in international leadership, so we are talking to her. We've talked to her probably four or five sessions this year, and she's giving us a lot of leadership advice, which is helping us. She gave us a true callers kind of activity. So we did a little worksheet split into groups, stuff like that, that helped us figure out what our leadership type was and how we can use our emotions and how we deal with things to help other people with leadership. We finished by eating a little buffet over at AUTG, and then we went back to fit at the end of the day. Thank you guys. <laughs> Hello, it's wonderful to meet you guys. My name's Emily. Um, I'm from Meta Bridge and I'm a member of Fayette Leadership. Um, I'm going to talk about Taste of Bridge Day. If you guys have never been, you really should go. It was at AOTG this year. Um, it is every year, so you should go next year. But we like helped judges. We went around and we like got like the food from the judges, judges for the judges to the restaurants. So we got to do that and we got to eat and we got to experience all the fun stuff. Um, it was a really great experience for all of us, and I feel like we should continue doing that as a class in the future. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jordan Harris. I'm part of the Fayette County Leadership, and I tore my ACL, so I'm just going to be sitting right here post-surgery. <laughs> um, so I'm going to basically be talking about the Taste of Bridge Day, not the Taste of Bridge Day, but our meeting after it and it consisted of us going to cathedral and there we kind of had our breakfast before we went to the Fayette theater and there we met up with Dr. Mandy and we discussed taste of bridge day because some of us volunteered of bringing the food from the restaurants to the judges and we told her how she could improve what she did great and what we're looking forward to and then after that we practiced some public speaking and kind of coming up with things on the fly so we practiced some stories storytelling activities and we got three cards and we had to make a story based on those and we worked on telling stories in different perspectives and in different person so first person second person and we also had conversations and we learned how to maybe have different opinions on things but still be able to argument that but also doing that sounding educated and not just arguing with no purpose Hi, nice to meet you. I'm AJ Bain. I'm a junior at Oak Hill High School, and I'm part of the current class of Leadership Fayette County. So I'm going to be talking about one of our earlier leadership meetings. So we went to Rivers. We met with the owner of Rivers and talked about what it is like to own Rivers, own a tourism business around here, what it's like currently owning a business in this area. While we were there, we also met with Chris Fussell. He's the owner of Waterstone. Um, he's also a teacher at Yale. We talked to him about what it's like to teach at Yale, what it's like to work out of state and come back here. We also discussed controversial topics that he deals with on a daily basis. It was like, or um, he deals with like a, a very like sensitive situations to where it was like, we ran these experiments to where it would be like, what situation do you find more that you would have to send more troops to. And we ran that just to see how all the people in leadership would feel about that. And then afterwards, we did some more team building exercises to where we discussed different topics like um, equality and equity in women's sports. And even though like, if you are not involved in women's sports or a topic you're not involved with, whether it be women's sports or anything else, how you should still hold some responsibility to it and understand why it's a controversial subject. Hi, my name is Jackson Pino, and I'm a part of the leadership class of 2025, and I'm here today to talk about Thanksgiving Day. Uh, we went through leadership and volunteered at the Lewis Community Center uh, to help those in need on Thanksgiving, and it was a really great experience. I was there with Cadence Pennington and another graduate of leadership Bay County uh, named Catherine Dyer. And on that day, I learned that it's not always about what we feel when we're volunteering, but more about what the people feel when they receive.
My name is Addison Salvatore. I'm a junior at Echo High School and I'm in leadership at Fayette County. And I'm gonna be talking about our Christmas session. It was super fun. It was a great bonding experience. And we all wore pajamas, Christmas pajamas and Christmas socks. We had some that lit up. That was a great experience. We were at Possum Creek Retreat and we were able to learn leadership skills. We listened to podcasts, we watched videos and it was a really good experience. Hi, I'm Janessa Tilly. I am from Oco High School with Leadership Fayette County, and I'm going to talk to you about our college session. So we met with Dr. Mandy, who was a college administrator, and Mr. Chris Fussell, who is a professor at Yale, and um, Miss Phoebe, who is a counselor at a school, I think, in Ohio, and she does everything with like advising students on college and everything to do with college. So we talked about the application process, early enrollment, um, what types of colleges would be best for which types of people. And um, we also met with past leadership members who are who told us about their college experience as they are like presently in college. And it was really great to hear their advice and real life experiences as people who are soon to be applying and attending colleges. Hi, I'm Rhian Davis. I'm a junior at Oak Hill High School. And one of our most recent sessions was at the Gaines State Fayetteville. In this session, we talked to an alumni of the leadership program, Jessica Zukowski, who was telling us about different programs that we can do outside of going straight to college, different gap year programs where you can make money. Because she was trying to explain to us that college really isn't for everybody. And sometimes you have to explore other options instead of college. And then we had lunch. And then, <laughs> and then we they're teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> lots, lots of good food. I mean, but after that, we had Dr. Mandy come back, who has been a big help for us throughout this program. And we kind of narrowed down the issue we want to fix within our community, which as we all have talked about, we learned that we think there should be more accountability within the school system. And we plan on going to the Board of Education sometime the next month or two to talk to them about fixing this issue. Hello, I am Jordan Floyd and I'm also part of leadership. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were invited by the Canyon Rim Rotary Club to attend one of their regular meetings at the Gaines Estate. And while we were there, the guest speakers were President Gee from WBU, President Stewart from WBU Tech, and General James A. Hoyer, who is over like president over innovation at WVU, and they were the speakers. And so they talked to us a lot about how they hope to grow West Virginia and how they hope to grow our state through the colleges. And then us as students also got to participate in discussion with them and ask questions and sort of share maybe like our ideas or questions and really um, talk about how we're hoping and how they're hoping to grow the state of West Virginia. And then afterwards, we got to meet with them one-on-one -on -one, as well as other people who attended the meeting. And it was really cool for us to sort of be part of the adults and sort of be a part of the people right now who are in the state and who are also hoping like we are to grow where we live. Hi, I'm Talia Hicks. I'm a junior at Manila and Trail High School and I'm also a part of Leadership Fayette County. Today I will be talking about our last most recent session where we had a cooking challenge. At the beginning of our day, we got into small little groups and we decided what we was going to be cooking. And then we went to Kroger and we got all the ingredients we would need for all of our recipes. And then after that, we took and we went and we cooked all of it for our appetizers. We had a salad and veggie tray. And after that, for our appetizer, we had chicken and garlic mashed potatoes. And for our dessert, we had a cinnamon sugar blondie brownie topped with ice cream. We got to meet the owner of Pinheads, the recent leader of Leadership Pitt County, and also a bunch of other dignitaries. And overall, it was a great experience. So my name is Candace Pennington, and I'm a junior at Oak Hill High School. Um, so I'm going to be talking about today's session. Um, today, we got a little tour from Sheriff Mike Fridley, and we also are able to come in here, which is a great opportunity and experience. Um, and then we're also going to get lunch at Secret Sandwich. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, 
I appreciate you guys letting us be uh, being able to come in here and just get this opportunity uh, for us to learn how the county commission actually works. So thank you. Hi, my name is Rhiannon Turner, and I am a student at Meadowbridge High School, and I am part of the Leadership Fayette County. And today we have heard many of our past uh, meetings, but I'm going to talk about one of our future meetings. One of our future meetings, we are going to talk to the Board of Education about what we think needs to be changed within our school system. We've had many conversations about um, just the accountability of the resource officers, and the discipline issues at our schools. And we have also talked to some eighth graders and played games with them similar to the games that we played with Ace, our first meeting. Um, and that's what I have to say. Except for you'll probably have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All this food talk right before lunch. Yeah, I noticed that. Good job. Is that everybody? Yeah. Yeah, you guys did great. I mean, your eye contact and your diction, just fantastic. And I see a couple of young women that I've known since they were little in the front there. I can't even believe you're old enough to be a part of this now. Um, Thank you done a lot better than I do. <laughs> That's a fact. I'm trying to get some, you know, some ideas. You, know. you don't see, but we have like cheat sheets up here. <laughs> pronounce stuff. And, and you know, when I went to school at Oak Hill, I didn't have a professor from Yale. I just had teachers that yelled. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have that, but, uh, you know, welcome. And I think one of the, somebody won an award this past week or something. Didn't know. A student or a teacher? A student. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you guys go ahead and tell us about what you want? Recently, I got to attend the West Virginia State Poetry Out Loud competition at the Culture Center in Charleston. And it was my first time ever doing it. And so I was actually very nervous, but I was also really excited because I love performing and I like poetry. And so it was a really cool experience for me to get to meet other people who are passionate about that. And I managed to place in the top 10. So I was very um, and I was very grateful for that. Um, very grateful to God. I give all the glory to him. Uh, I was praying a lot backstage, and I really think he's the one who gave me the strength to get out there and do it. Um, I do perform actually at the Historic Fate Theater. Shout out to them. Um, but yeah, so that was, I was very grateful to be a part of that. Grateful that the state is, that's something that they fund and that they appreciate, which uh, are, are the arts. And hopefully I can try again next year and maybe move my way up. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just so some backstory, I go to the Fayette Institute of Technology. I'm in their pre-pharmacy program. So in that program, I have the opportunity to do a competitive event called HOSA, which is for future health professionals. Within that, we have different categories that we can compete in. There can go anything from vet veterinary, um, clinical nursing, forensic science. I had decided to compete in pharmacy science. So that starts with our local competition, which is held at the Fayette Institute of Technology. Um, I had to compete a um, two skills that was included in the pharmacy science guidelines. I had one first place there for my local competition. So I then got to advance to states. I had to take a test before I could go and compete those. And we had went to Marshall University. We're very thankful that they gave us that spot to be able to do what we really want to do, which is advance in the health and medical field. And um, I competed against four different people. I had to do three different skills that were also in those guidelines. 
and I had one first place in the state level in pharmacy science. So in June, I will be going to Houston, Texas, and I will be competing in their international division. What types of things, skills do they test in pharmacy science? Is it chemistry or? So the two skills that I did for my local competition, um, I had to identify some instruments that we use in um, just the pharmacy atmosphere. So I had 15 minutes and I had to name 15 items. I had to spell them correctly, had to give the proper use for them. And when you have a a prescription for narcotics, you have to have a um, DEA number, which is completely different with each um, prescription. So with that, you have to make sure that it's valid. Um, now you can use a computer and it'll tell you right away, but obviously before you couldn't really do that. So we had to be able to identify that DEA number and they took five parts out of the prescription that are supposed to be in there. So I had to identify those five missing product products and sorry. Um, there's also different skills that I had to do for the state one. I had to withdraw liquid from a vial, use the right um, measurements and the right directions on how to do that. It's very specific and yeah. Very precise. Yes. Great job, guys. Do you have any questions for us? You want us to talk to you about what we do? Yes, please. Yeah. I'll, let, I'll let Ms. Taylor. She, <laughs> I'll start there and come down. Well, the, the county commission is, is and, and municipalities such as the town of Fayetteville and town of Oak Hill are your local government entities. So the municipalities cover um, everything within their lines and the county is governs everything outside of those lines. So what we do is we collect taxes. Um, we use those taxes to maintain buildings like this one, um, to pay employees of the county. Um, one of the other things we spend tax dollars on, I should just look at the agenda. Um, <laughs> we, we give to certain um, projects, you know, if people come in and they say we need money for the food pantry or we need money for something else or to fix this or fix that. That's, that's what we do. We manage the money and usually chaos in my opinion. Mm. Um, we have to all three act together. We're not allowed to act independently. So we can't make decisions outside of a public setting. It's very important. Um, to for the transparency in government, but that we not um, collaborate outside of a public setting about how we're going to spend taxpayer dollars and and make important decisions. So we put everything on a public notice, and including you guys are on our agenda from earlier this morning, leadership Fayette County here, and we tell everybody what we're going to talk about, and then we get in here and we talk about it, and we've added additional layers of transparency by. Um, by letting people attend by Zoom. And we record all of our meetings and put it on YouTube. And we have somebody taking minutes that we also publish on the web to kind of help you get through, um, maybe to the point in YouTube you want to get to rather than have to watch the whole boring thing. Because uh, it does get boring. Um, we also are in charge of making sure with the county clerk that the elections go smoothly. So we have to do what's called a canvas and supervise the canvas to make sure that um, what we do is we randomly pick two precincts of the, how many do we have? Almost 40. 40. 39. 30, yeah. Um, 40. Is it 40, 40 precincts. Okay. Um, and then we make sure we have people volunteer from both parties to hand count all of that. And then we make sure that our machines have counted properly just to kind of double check things. Um, and then we have to certify the election results. So once the, it comes in, we have to say, okay, these are accurate and these are the people who have been elected properly in, in office. Um, trying to think of some of the other things. Development. We um, we, development. Right, economic sure. development. Um, so, you know, we love how small Fayette County is, but we also wish, wish we had more money for things like our schools. And in order to do that, we need to raise revenue. And the way we raise revenue is taxes. 
we already taxed the most we are allowed to tax right now. So, you know, and um, and we're not political about this, but as Republicans, we don't like tax. So, you know, we, we're trying to figure out how we can accomplish those things without raising taxes. And the way we do that is we try to um, develop the economy better. So what we're trying to do is attract businesses to this area and focus some of the tax revenue we have toward expanding infrastructure. So more people have broadband, more people have running water and sewer. Um, we have places everywhere north of the bridge in Fayette County along Route 19 doesn't have um, sewer. And a lot of them don't have water, a lot of those areas. So what we're trying to do is attract industry in addition to um, feeding into our tourism industry, we're trying to attract other types of industry here so our economy doesn't um, fall when the tourism season is dormant. So those are the types of things we're trying to do. And in order to do that, we've got to have better schools. We have to have access to broadband because the internet is here, you know, and, and we have people here who have less access and, and um, no clean water, just like a third world country. So um, the problem is a lot of those things are super expensive. So another thing we do is we ask for money from the federal and state governments to help pay for these things. Um, so basically they tax us, they take our money, and then we have to ask for it back. <laughs> and, and we do ask for it back and we, we try to focus where we're requesting those funds in certain areas to make sure that they're going where they need to go to make Fayette County better for the people who live here and for the people we hope will come here. Because a lot of us, you know, you probably have relatives who had to leave the state because there weren't enough jobs and there weren't enough things for people to do. You're probably wondering if you can stay if you want to. Um, and we're trying to, we're responsible to some extent to to make that better for you and to try to create more jobs here by bringing industry here. And so that's a big thing that we're trying to do. Have I missed anything else? We also, anytime anybody wants to get money from the federal state government, they ask for support letters from us. So um, so we can put our support behind issues. If there are random things like roads that need to be fixed or something that's dangerous, we'll send letters to the state organizations in charge of fixing those things, even though we don't have any power over it, we can certainly put our weight behind requesting that these things get addressed by the people who are required to do it. Um, we also have some responsibility over the public service districts that provide water here, and, and we have a lot that are failing, so we get involved in those cases to try to make sure that, um, you know, people are getting water is our end goal, but but to try to get to the bottom of what's going wrong and, and whether there's anything we can do to advocate for those facilities. So those are those are just some examples of, of what we do, but but two of three of us have to agree to anything for it to happen. And it has to happen in public. So everybody knows, you know, what we're doing. And those are very important components of it. And while we cover the entire county, we each represent a district in the county. There's three districts. Commissioner Taylor takes care of New Haven. She's been here, this is her fourth year. Uh, Commissioner Luisas takes care of Plateau. This is his sixth year. I take care of the Valley, and this is my eighth year. Uh, we get to serve a six-year term. Uh, every time that there's an election that's coming up, one of us have to rerun, rerun if we would like to, or others can challenge. Now, although we have three different districts that we represent, as me as a commissioner, I will represent the whole county, yeah. and I work for the whole county. Right. That, that that's that's me yeah. and the whole county elects each of us so when whenever a new commissioner is up for a vote the whole county votes um, i think the importance and the reason there are districts is because the idea is that you live within the district and so you can understand better what the issues are in that area because you know the issues up here in Fayetteville are very different from what's going on in Meadow Bridge very different from what's going on in the valley where i grew up and, and so, you know, the idea is to have, just like with your Board of Education, to have members from each of these communities so they understand the needs of that community. And that's a reason we, we drew, that's another thing we do is we draw district lines every few years based on the census. It's every 10 years. So when the census comes out, the population has to be evenly based 
and that affects your, um, they're called magisterial districts, but that affects our elections. And, and importantly for you guys right now, who's on your board of education? And who's doing those things? So we redrew them to what to what we thought more accurately reflected the people who lived in those areas, and um, and I think that's going to make a difference in your school system. Um, you'll have more people who are able to, you know, people in Fayetteville and Oak Hill. Because right now I live two blocks from this courthouse, but I'm the New Haven representative. And to me, that wasn't very fair because I lived two blocks from the courthouse. So we redrew the lines to make sure that New Haven is more New Haven. And, and that's more like across the river and Meadow Bridge and, and that area. And that the valley is more the valley and that the plateau is really the people on the plateau, which is Oak Hill and Fayetteville. So now you're going to have more schools might be less likely to close, for example, if you have people from those communities on the Board of Education rather than people who live up here and don't care about the long commute and that sort of thing. So I'm glad Meadow Bridge got to keep the high school up there. That was made me very happy and I wish we had kept ours too in the Valley. But anyway, that's very long-winded lawyer way of telling you what we do, but you guys have any questions? I do want to say that's one of the reasons I don't talk very much is because <laughs> Because I talk too much. And talks too much. And the time, you know, so go ahead. Um, I know you the mic, please. <laughs> I know you guys cover the county. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of different people coming to you and saying they need money for this and this. How do you decide who to support with that and what not to? Like, how do you make those decisions together on what to support and what not? It's a tough question, but well, you it's a good question. It's a really good question. <laughs> to, to me, what's most important out of the 20 requests? And, and, and that's one of the factors. What's most important? What's the needs of each request? Some requests might be more needy, if, especially if it comes to water, if it comes to... Gosh, I don't know what else. If something's an emergency that broke that we have to fix. But one thing that we did do differently that other commissions haven't is we decided at least for the ones that are non-emergent requests. Like for example, an emergency is when we had the floods or the fire in the gorge, um, we had to vote for funding to help pay for a helicopter to help put out the fire in the gorge and things like that. Those are emergencies that we'll have to hear throughout the year. But if it's not an emergency, we're only considering those requests all at all at one time, twice a year. So we can look at them all at once. So I think Previous commissions, they would just look at it and say, okay, this is a good idea. Do we have the money? Let's spend it. What we're doing, and then the money might be spent and a better idea will come along next month or something is greater need, and then they don't have the money. You know, So what we're doing is we're taking a couple of times a year, we're looking at all the requests at one time, um, and we base it on a strategic plan that we came up with. So now there's certain needs that aren't that don't fall within the strategic plan, um, like flood prevention and stuff like that. Probably should now that I think about it, but 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 the strategic plan sets our priorities, and so we look at the priorities that we agree upon. That plan is revised. Is it every five years, ten years? We have to do it every ten years, but, but yeah, but we're supposed to look at it like. It but we want to update it every couple of years just to make sure we're on the right track. So we want to see if it falls within that plan and of the priorities that we set. And if it doesn't, then it's not going to get funded. If it does, then we have to look and see which are the higher priorities and and which can comport with that. Smaller well, requests are much easier to approve than big requests. And request also if it, if it supports supports the people. And maybe a, or some requests don't support the people in a category two. What supports what? That's a good important? point. So if somebody comes in and says, "I want this for my project, and it's not going to benefit but ten people in Fayette County who are paying taxes," they're probably not going to get approved. You know, if if they come in and they say this is going to benefit everybody in Fayette County, or this is going to offer a benefit, like say a health department benefit or something like that. You know, that's something that's more likely to get funded because it's going to benefit more people who are paying for that benefit. And so that's that's a big issue. That's a good point that we consider is, who you know, how broad is the effect? Because everybody's paying into it and the municipalities have their own funding. So we take those, you know, they have to compete a little harder for funds because they have their own tax revenue and the people outside of the municipalities do not. All they have is what 
the money that we collect. And so we have to take a look at that as a whole and say, okay, is this going to benefit, you know, if we put, you know, this money in here and it benefits only the small number of people, you know, what, what are we taking away from everyone else? That's why one of our priorities from Anstead to Route 19 on Route 60, because we see a lot of opportunity there to help the county. Any other questions? Yeah. So with making big decisions in our county, there are going to be people with opposing views. There's going to be backlash. So how do you all find it best to remain resilient in situations like this? You can't please everybody. So you got to please yourself. No. And <laughs> <laughs> just tough skin, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I take a lot of it personally, I'll tell you. It, it's hard. He doesn't. I, I do because, you know, I think we all are trying to do our best. And, and you have to remind yourself that usually the majority is silent. And the people who, you know, support you may not be speaking up for you, but usually the complainers are the ones who have a special interest who didn't get their way or something like that. And, and, you know, we just, I just remind myself, people put their trust in me to be here and, and that I just need to keep doing my best and have confidence in everything I do. Like if I, if I have doubts about something I'm doing, um, then I'm, I'm going to have to reconsider what I'm doing. Like, you know, I don't make any decision that I'm not fully comfortable with. And one thing that you guys can do and spread around to other students and throughout your life, if you see something that you're passionate about and you don't believe you should vote that way, let someone know before they vote. Don't do it after the vote. You know, we, we hear from people after we do a vote. We don't hear from that many people before we do a vote. Yeah, it's usually we, we put out this public notice and it's ignored until after the fact. <laughs> And then we get the decisions, but but there's a most decisions can be undone too. I mean, there are a lot of things, you know, if we make a mistake, and that's that's a big important part of leadership is to recognize when you make a mistake and accept that a decision is better than indecision because you make a decision. If you make a mistake, you can always go back, or most of the time, go back and correct it. And you should be willing to admit that you've made a mistake and correct your error. And that's, you know, we've had to do that before we've made decisions to bring consultants on and we wish we hadn't done it because it ended up being a waste of money. And then, you know, there are just things you live and you learn, but, but you have to have the confidence in your own um, desire to serve, to admit when you do something wrong so you can fix it. Cause that's, that's a sign of true leadership and strength. They won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you guys, um, like, how you got to this position. Is it like something you've always been passionate about, or did something um, inspire you to want to be a commissioner or something like that? My dad talked me into it. <laughs> nice. My dad served 22 years at House Delegates. We couldn't really serve anymore, so he, he, he's always wanted me to do it. And I've, I've done basically, as a county commissioner, it's business oriented anyway. I've done business since I was 19. So it was natural to me anyway. To me, I felt it was natural to come in because that's all I've done is budgeting, developing, looking at projects and stuff like that. So, uh, and, I, and I like this job because it's what I've done all my life. I was brought up, brought up doing this. Uh, that's how I got into it. I was concerned with the lack of water and uh, I commented to some of my friends and they said, well, put your money where your mouth is and run. Uh, but you know, we talked about lack of water. 39% of the county residents do, do not have running water. So they can't go to their sink and turn it on and brush your teeth. 42% um, of the county don't have the ability to have a sewer. Um, so that's something that, that we spend a lot of time on working with and, and uh, try to make some doors open up. I never wanted to be in politics. I'm still not sure about it. Um, but I think, I think people who have the drive to help people, what motivated me, same reason I wanted to be a lawyer was to be able to help people. And, you know, a lot of people think that's cliche, but 
but there are some of us out there who who just really want to do the right thing for people. And if you don't step up, it's hard to be in this but for, for the reasons you pointed out, but also um, because you're unpopular all the time, like somebody's always bad, but it doesn't pay well. It's, it's, this is a part-time job. Um, so we all have full-time employment and you have this, what ends up being a full-time job on top of that full-time job. And you have to really um, be motivated by something altruistic to, to want to do it, unless you're power hungry. There are a few out there who, who feel that way, but but we need good people. We need people to fit this in, government service. You know, you wonder why your politicians aren't great. It's because these jobs stink. They're not fun. Like you, you have to spend a full day doing this kind of stuff in, in addition to your regular job and, and people hate you for it, no matter what you do, and no matter how hard you try. So, you know, keep that in mind, but, but public service is also very rewarding because there's no other place where you can serve so many with what you do. And make change for the better. Yeah, make a difference. So what I would like to ask, most of us are college bound students or plan on going to college, whether it be local or out of state. What do you see careers that we should possibly go into that would help benefit Fayette County the best? Like lawyers, doctors, nurses, engineers. Yes. And I tell you what, being in business all my life, <laughs> there's two, there's two assets. I call them assets, but they'll probably jump on me when I point them out. Two assets that's very important to me in the development is a lawyer and a bookkeeper and accountant. Mm -hmm. So that to me, it, it all revolves around being a lawyer and an accountant when it comes to the county commission and development. I mean, I mean. I mean, that's 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 what I think about it. I think there's a reason. There's no degree requirement for this job. And and while being a lawyer comes in handy, we have lawyers. I do not advise the commission as a lawyer. I'm, I'm a lawyer and I can think that way. But um, we have lawyers. So you can, I think the important skill is the, the desire to help your fellow man. Because if you have that, no matter what your education and you are humble enough to realize you don't know everything, you can hire the people you need to advise you. And, and you so always surround yourself with people who know more than you and you always be a good leader. If you wanna be the smartest person in the room, you're gonna be that boss that people talk about behind their back because you, know, you, don't, you don't know what you're doing. You know, you've gotta rely on your people and empower your people. And so I think, I think it's great, and, and I agree. There was another speaker who said we don't all need to go to college, and I think that's true. I mean, we need tradespeople too. Um, but there was no education in the world that would have prepared me for this job, I can tell you. There are just so many different things, and you know, it's helped, it's helped me understand statutes better, the rules when I have to read them. It helps me keep these two out of trouble a little bit. Um, but but frankly, they don't need me because we hire somebody to to really do that kind of work. And and there was nothing I did not feel like my law degree or any of my other education helped me at all when it came to this. It you helped know. me in this position. I was going to do it. It helps him a lot. Yeah, it benefits him. Yeah, it benefits him. Me. But it doesn't. But it doesn't benefit me. Um, you know, it did not prepare me more for this. What what you need to do is you care and you educate yourself as you go and you surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. That's how you do it. And if you're talking about a position like this, is that basically what the question was too? Or right? just any general position, whether it be poli politics or just well, a job I'll tell you, what, if, if, if you, and I'm not college educated, I guess, you know, I'm not, both of these are, but I'm not. Uh, but, in a position like this, if you do what's right and you have the right people behind you, the scenes, you'll do you'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. And we have committees that we appoint people to. And if you appoint again really smart people to these committees to help make decisions that you trust, then they can make recommendations and you don't have to become an expert on every little thing. Uh, that's that's something that you have to keep in mind. You can always put groups of people together and assemble them and let them think of things. For example, we have a park board and they're over the Memorial Building and the county park. 
And they know so much more than we do about all of that, about recreation, about good ideas, maybe making memorial building more useful. And so they'll get together, they'll come up with the ideas, and then they'll come in to us with those ideas. One last question. See, I remember you now no. from the Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you guys were talking earlier about um, allocating money in cases of emergencies. How quickly can you allocate those funds to emergency situations? Yeah, well, that's that's a great question. So we have to give notice. We have to give public notice, but there there are exceptions. We have emergency meetings that we can call. And we can have them as soon as absolutely necessary. So we put out the agenda as soon as we know we're going to meet, just to give as much notice as possible. And then we explain on the record while we're meeting on the emergency basis. And then we we vote. So we have called emergency meetings, like when the floods happened in the valley and the fire in the gorge, for the purpose of allocating funds. They had a building. Um, there was fire in Montgomery one time, and they had they needed some money to knock some walls in so they didn't fall on people. And so we had an emergency meeting to allocate funds for that. So we, we can react pretty quickly. Um, we, it only requires two of us if for any reason, three of us weren't available, but um, we've all three been available for every single one, so. And I think having a, a great county administrator too, to help us out, Ruth. <laughs> She's the CEO basically of the county. She runs things. I heard the cats. <laughs> we being the cats <laughs> but uh, we couldn't make it without her I mean she does an excellent job she keeps us in line um, make sure that we know some things that we may want to push and she says well you can't do that because you can't spend money on that particular project so Is there are strings attached to every single bit of funding we get from the government Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody have a question for the CEO? <laughs> CEO. <laughs> All right, let's jump. Can we get in behind you and take a picture? Yeah. It is. <laughs> Would you grab that microphone and we'll move it so you, it's not, you know, just like the whole thing, hand it to me so it's not a picture. Surrounded by ladies. Thanks for noticing. I'm just making sure you're not. Tell us. Yeah, okay. All right. Hold on. There you go. Three, two, one. Now, silly. <laughs> the commissioner didn't be silly. Silly. Oh, I thought you silly. said ceiling. We can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up. One more. Three, two, one. Oh, Hey, Ashton. Mark and Dale for just a little half of the Oh, just a little bit, yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Enjoy your time here. Enjoy your lunch. I know it's here. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. See you. Thank it's all right. It happens. <laughs> That's why they're up there like that. It's over foul easy. And congratulations, buddy. Hey, this one, this one is Allison. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> that surprised me.
Right. I guess we're just going to roll with this thing now. Yeah. Chris, can we talk? Hold on, John, we're to take a small break. I apologize. Wait, wait, wait. We need to adjourn that meeting. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to move we adjourn the regular meeting. Second. I guess I'll. All right, let's call this uh, 20. Is it? It's March 20, 2024 meeting. The order and uh, about the municipality workshop, Chris. We're gonna try to get you try to get you out of here. I appreciate it. Guys, y'all want to introduce yourself? This is the, I'm I'm here from Meadow Bridge today, so we'll start here, y'all. I'm Betty Kincaid, Meadow Bridge Council. Jimmy Kincaid, Meadow Bridge Council. Jimmy Kelly, Mayor. Julie Judy Council, Patricia Jones, reporter. Thank y'all for coming all the way down. Absolutely. Uh, you probably got this. This is what I said to Drew. But I figured you'd have a lot of Yeah. So, yeah. so what, what they've got is they, they put in and got USDA money to do a community center. We got the drawing on there. And of that community center, they were they need $543,750. They were um, they were given five hundred sixteen thousand five hundred. Some of that was the USDA, and some of that was uh, the governor had given them a match. Actually, with that sheet. I had it. Now, Josie, who was on the phone? Uh, Jimmy Kincaid. Jimmy Kincaid. Yeah. Yeah. From Putnam County. Yes, they. Um, run the nutrition center, the senior center. Okay. They own some of the equipment that's in the in the center, right? Now. So, so yeah, they they asked um, they asked Governor Justice for the match. They got one hundred and eight seven hundred and fifty from Governor Justice to go with the earmark uh, that they received at four hundred thirty five. Uh, Governor Justice only gave eighty one eighty one thousand five hundred. So. What what we've been doing, we've been trying to fit everything that they need into $543,000, essentially. Um, they absolutely <laughs> need the $27,250 for the rest of the match so that they can get the full funding from the other sources. We were talking about a backup emergency generator because currently they have none in the, in the center. So if they lose power, their food uh, spoils, they don't have a warming shelter, they don't have a cooling center. So we're thinking if we can get them a backup generator, then if the power would go out, which it goes out fairly often on that side, they could at least keep their food uh, fresh and be able to house or keep some of the seniors comfortable during those, those times. And then we were talking with them and stuff. It, it looks like, you know, the kitchen equipment, the coolers, the walk-in freezers and things like that. If we could up, update that stuff, make it a little bit more feasible for them for their operation, it'd be another 22750 And then there was some additional design cost, um, mainly trying to relocate that road. You see on that drawing where it says move the road. We're trying to make it to where we could get a really good ADA compliant entrance for the seniors to come in. And if we can get that road slightly relocated, we can get them an ADA. So the total request that, that we're asking, Meadow Bridge is asking for right now for you guys is 114,500. And that would go into the pot and that'd give them a final project cost of $631,000. Great. We're gonna um, be making the decisions at a later date, but I wanna let you know, Meadow Bridge, that some of this money that we have left was already set aside for your area, that we had already, um, we're trying to evenly disperse it throughout the county, the, the amount that we were you know, giving to community centers and stuff like that. So, so there's plenty on the table for your community. I wanted to let you know that, that we, um, and, and this is well within that amount, that much I can say. And Chris, I want to ask you one question. I know you yes, sir. I mean, I've already looked at some of this. Yes. Stuff. So the total, is there any deadline that this money has to be allocated for the grant? No, we, we've been working with Danielle from USDA. She's wanting us to move on it. She wants us to get something going. 
we actually tried to go back to the pot and try to get more money for them. And USDA had a meeting with us and told Meadowbridge that they, they either spend this money and use this grant or they probably won't get another one. Right. So, so as long as it's by June, our debt will be I, I think we'd be okay. Yeah, be okay. That's my main And, and honestly, if, if, if we have a hard commitment from you guys saying how much you can give to them, then we'll go ahead and start the design process. Mm -hmm. And that really won't set us back months because we'll, we'll be in the actual design portions of it up until that point anyway. Okay, I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. it won't be retracted if, if it's not no. a certain time. Okay. No, no, we should be okay. Well, we okay. Can, Chris, I, I do have a question. Yeah. If we yes. Can, so yeah, um, I was asking. You just have two ADA parking areas. Right up front. Right now, they've got a couple of them over here. Of course, the paint's still wore off on the pavement. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. They'll be there, but I don't have... We don't have enough money to put too much more into that right there. Could you check and see what it would be to maybe put concrete down from off the road where a wheelchair could come here and then mm -hmm. into the entry? Oh, yeah. That way they could have more parking for ADA if needed. Yeah, a sidewalk. Or, and or stuff someone like that. else could come in on a sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, we could look at that. Okay. I, we could absolutely look at that. I think that would serve better than having grass, but you can't get a wheelchair. For yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can't speak for the town, but you know, if if you guys look at it and you see that see fit to to give a little extra to it, then you know, there's there's other requests that they'd like to see in this community center that just wasn't in the budget. So we we were looking at trying to add or convert a couple of offices up in the front end of the existing building that could be converted into like a. Uh, use for the city hall at times, and they could have their uh, town meetings in the uh, community building as opposed to that little place we're in now. But, um, you know, funding don't go as far as what you want. Well, if, if you come to us with the with some quotes, with some figures, we're going to have a follow-up meeting. There are a couple of municipalities who couldn't make it okay. today, um, Dolly Bridge, Smithers specifically. Um, we could set it for that day. Okay. So if you could address Commissioner Brenneman's concern, maybe give us an estimate for that, and then also these this wish list that you have for that building. Okay. Um, we could take a look at that. We can consider. When, when is that? When that meeting? We on? haven't set it yet. It's probably going to be in April. Okay. You know, on route building something. Okay. My guess is we have several things set for the 16th of April already, so I think it'll probably be on the. 24th when we have our meeting. Perfect. Perfect. And Chris, yeah. this is going to address the insulation and the building and everything yes. else. So yeah. it, it can be used year round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's going to, you know, you see we're putting a four year on the front end of it to where when you open the door currently, right now, if you open up that door, every bit of your cold air or all the hot air goes out one side, all the cold air comes in and the seniors freeze yeah. to death. Yeah. So we're going to have a four year in there to where that doesn't happen. And the way we're setting up the kitchen, when they're cooking back there, they'll be able to have, per se, the air conditioner or we'll zone it. So they can have the air conditioner running and not have to have a door open, which won't will eliminate that big draft that they have. Which will eliminate some of our power bills because we didn't pay it. Yeah. That's $1,200, $1,300 a month. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, I want to let you guys know, too, that um, we didn't hear from your PSD when we had our PSD meeting last week, but we also had a couple of other PSDs that weren't able to come in. So if they, if you want to get with them and have them reschedule with us, if they have any requests, um, the April 24th meeting would be a good time to hear those. So we have some coming today at three. Right? Ace is we one do up. have some at three today. So if they're coming today, that'd be great. But if not, we can today. She okay. said that she's going to try. Danice is coming today. Yeah. And if you want to let your PSD know if they have any requests, they should come in and we're talking about more reasonable requests than we are major infrastructure expansions. A lot came in for ex excavators and certain equipment, telemetry and things like that. Yeah, we've been working with mayor on a couple of emergencies. They got one right, they got a pump station down right now. So we've been trying to help them get uh, some emergency money to get the, the pump up and running and stuff like that. There's a, there's a couple of things that would be very beneficial for them that I could think of. One's your power usage on those. If we could get someone in there with some, do some bolt testing, find out where all that dead power is going to, that would be some. That right now they're paying two, three hundred dollars a month for a pump station that is not running, just dead power just running onto their their system. Where's it going? Don't have clue. 
And they got six wow. fuel stations, and and the one at the plant runs. Uh, I'm not 24 hours a day, but the one at the plant runs more than any other station, and it's the cheapest one that they have to run. And it's only how much is it a month? And then they've got five pump stations that are pushing out about $200 a month just to run the pump stations. Hmm. But there's two or three different sections. You can see there's three renovations been done to it. There's three different control panels up on there. Hmm. Like they've just added to it or, or and you don't even know what's alive, what's dead. It's, it's, it's a mess. So they probably run it in parallel instead of in series, and mm -hmm. that's why well, using all the extra power. Yeah. If y'all can figure that out too, come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That that would be a benefit. We've actually approached and, and asked for some some money through through the government, uh, through Jim Justice's office to help out with all the that we we figured out. But yeah, this is basically what you're looking at now is kind of what we feel is like the like that's it. That's no. That's our wish list, but it's a modest wish list to get at least get the project going. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you all. Thank you guys for coming in. Uh, get the warming station in there, you know, because we have a lot of people that are on oxygen. And don't see so, you know, our goes out. Chris, um, how long will it take to No, 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 there's no match discussed, ma'am. We're just talking about fully funding whatever we fund. What's the first thing you're doing? So that's what I was trying to get. But this is not fair. I mean, the girl is fair. I mean, you need to say. The renovation, we said six months. That could be a little bit more to go. I see two months. Two months. Well, maybe even that expansion of the handicap. Uh, yeah. Because that's a part of the curve first. But if you look at that, the way we're going, we basically eliminate three or uh, the two walls, existing walls. Mary Ingram? Yeah. I know you got to get out of here, too. You ready? I'm ready. Come on. All right, thank you, guys. Oh, it was hot in here, but I got to Thank you. Sir, you better be careful. We love getting Okay, just next. Okay. Don't talk about that cooking. You fix me lunch. I'm nervous. Yeah, I'm always nervous. You're not nervous. You're not nervous at all. Uh, first of all, Commissioner, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to my city. Uh, I did send a letter in, and uh, we've been working a long time, or I've been at it for eight years, and we've got the most of the low hanging fruit in Montgomery. We've tore down 40 houses. Um, we've built parks, we've done some things. Uh, we're starting to build the back on those properties that we've torn those houses down. So I've got a few things here um, that I'd like to bring to your attention. Again, these are not small projects. Uh, most of the small projects we've done, and, and you all helped us do those, do some of those. Um, so the first one was uh, we have an EDA trail grant to put a marina in uh, at the old tech marina, if you're familiar with it. Uh, we want to put 15 boat slips in there. Uh, bathrooms, make that a workable uh, project there on the river. That trail will go all the way up to to and including Smithers. We have a, an approved EDA grant. Uh, in fact, we're getting ready to uh, load it out for contract. Uh, Montgomery has uh, uh, put in match money for that for $87,500. If you all participate in that, that would be very appreciated. That is a $1.4 million grant that we have. Um, but that's not the big one. The next one's a big one. 
Um, we have uh, a federal, uh, we're waiting on the federal budget as most people are for 2023 grant that hasn't been approved yet. It is it is waiting approval for, for the Senate to approve it. It's made it through all the hurdles. But that's a four and a half million dollar grant and that's to build a um, indoor outdoor event center on Ferry Street where we've torn down that entire block. Um, we've done that with FEMA money. We've done it with um, various types of funding that we've gotten, but we have one more building to tear down there and uh, the entire Ferry Street will be vacant and it'll be ready for the event center. Um, that project, as I said, was four and a half million dollars, and the match for that is three hundred thousand dollars. If you can't do that, if you can do any portion of that, it would be greatly appreciated. I mean, I, I know you, you got restricted funds, so um, but that's going to require a match of three hundred thousand. Uh, the other one is uh, removal of the old high school that burnt that you all helped us tear the knock the walls down and keep it safe. That project's probably going to cost around six to nine hundred thousand dollars because it's a uh, brownfield now. We're working with um, the uh, brownfield folks, and uh, well, I don't have the property yet, so it's taken me two years, and we've been about uh, secured that. It went through its last hurdle, and um, so <laughs> that one is out there. Um, I'm hoping to get federal dollars for that to help clean that up. Um, we talking about the reap grant. That's state, though. State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but I don't think they're going to, they're, they're not going to fund all that. I don't, okay, I don't like to have good. that kind of money. I don't think. But they so probably do. Three? Not, yeah. No, they got $30 million in the account. Right yeah. Now. So I'm going to go after that, but I just want to bring you up to speed on that. <clears throat> we have, as I said, we have one structure left on Ferry Street. And it's the old Eagles uh, building. It's, it's a three story structure. The last large structure there. Um, we'd like for you to consider uh, participating in that removal. Uh, we estimate the removal of that building to be $90,000, uh, which the city can put some money in it. I can look for other, other monies for that. Uh, Another program that we have is, uh, and it's in its infancy, so I probably shouldn't be put on this list yet, but a boat launch <clears throat> under the Montgomery Bridge for river access, we're estimating that's going to cost about $80,000. And the last and final uh, thing is uh, the Pavilion Park at 4th and Harding Street, which is, uh, we put that there for the people that live in the high-rise building. Most of them have uh, electronic wheelchairs, chassis, and that type of stuff. So we, we're building a park there right down from, from that place. And, um, I, I put on my list, I asked for $35,000, but we've already put 14 in it. So I really only need 22,000 to finish that park. Uh, that's that's not a real big ask. But again, um, we've just about got all a lot of low hanging fruit. Uh, as far as tearing down buildings, I think I've got four more and I'll be done. I'm going to be tearing down five more uh, quickly this spring. Uh, and uh, again, we are uh, a couple of other things that we're doing is we're applying for a $200,000 grant to finish street lights on Front Street from where they end there to the dialysis center all the way from the fire department. We're estimating that to be about 200000 So that would be a $40,000 match. Uh, now we've applied for that. We don't have that. So that's lost stuff. Uh, yeah. What are your priorities? My priorities is the um, event center. And like I said, if, if you can't reach it all, it's 300000 but I'll go somewhere if I try to find some go and, and I have uh, the city hall refurb that we, we got $800,000. Uh, the governor's office matched that. And we have a uh, water separation plan going on Washington Street. And uh, that was one point four million dollar project, and the governor matched that. So I don't, I don't need to match like that. We're putting in a splash park down on the old pool site, and that needs no match. That's one hundred percent. So, and then we have second phase of that. <clears throat> excuse me, in the twenty three, uh, but our congressional ask, uh, we have, uh, and that will be no match, and that's another million dollars. 
So hopefully we'll have a real nice splash park down to the old pool we should be. Uh, so I don't need any help on that. Um, but again, I, you know, it's, it, this is big items, and uh, because we've got the low hanging fruit, and I'm, I'm, I'm particularly death about that. But now we're getting into the meat of it, and uh, so just help us what you can, and you, you know. Uh, and yeah. you, you said that property, you told me to change the subject, but you said that property, you don't own it yet, correct? No. So, okay. What happened, uh, Commissioner, is we had, uh, we came to the County Courts to take that property, and it's been a two-year process. Uh, and the judge said, well, did you advertise where this guy lives? Well, he lives in Redwood, California. So they sent us away. We were ready to take possession that day. We, uh, now, keep in mind, it's been two years we've been sending this guy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, cards and certified mails. And we brought him to court. He was but an and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he's, he's you know, Artie's Classico. That's not the name his mommy yeah. gave him. He's an, he's an alias. and It's just been a nightmare. But uh, So anyway, the court, the judge said, I want you to go back and advertise in Redwood, California, uh, which caught us off guard, and send another certified letter. Well, lo and behold, somebody signed for that certified letter. So we have to wait 30 days. Uh, and if he doesn't reply or show up, then we can go. What we're going to do is we've got about uh, $40,000 in liens against that property for grass cutting um, and $100 a day fine. And he hasn't showed up to court. So it's all added up to about $40,000. So what we hope to do is the courts will uh, let us buy it, that land. Because nobody else is going to pay $40,000. Uh, and then once we get the property, then, it's, then I can go forward and I've got the people at Marshall with the brownfields on board to help us. Okay. I don't know they have that kind of money. Well, I just asked Angela while we was talking, and I thought if if you own the property before December 31st, yeah, you can request either going with what we're doing, and, or you could probably do it. Right. And, uh, we can apply for it or you can apply for it okay and see if it's approved okay. and get the money that way i thought you could i thought we could but i wasn't sure until i texted angela while when, we when this when this building burned two years ago i got an estimate on it uh and it was six hundred thousand. but i said six to nine because inflation is absolutely mm -hmm. and all this building will have to be hauled to virginia well, or, yeah. it wouldn't hurt to apply oh I, will. I mean you know and and whether you do it or we do it I mean, you know, it's you know, we're here to help. So anything. Okay. So if you have any questions, and I know I didn't really come through a pile of mud on your desk, but oh no, I, I knew it was action. coming because I, I got the card from you about Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, any questions? No. Thank no. You, I Thank appreciate you. all you do. Thank I appreciate you. you. All right, Angie, you wanna? Yeah. Does anybody else got to leave real fast? Everybody else. Okay. Andrew. I'll be back. So I'm here actually on behalf of Town Pass. I'm the recorder, mayor, and um, So you guys did give us $112,000 um, early on to do our water project. So this is half town, half um, PSD. Um, this is the expenditure schedule. Um, so basically, we are at the end of getting the 40 customers water that never had water before in the Fourth Creek Town Creek, which actually isn't in the town. Um, but we are 92.33 short um, of after all the invoices and um, part of the grant, we were able to put um, radio read meters because our guys used to have to pull the meter and do the digital. So um, we are also asking the USDA to see if they have any funds, but we're just, you can use a backup in case they in a couple of weeks we'll to get an answer. So um basically um that's that's all the town needs. So that's right? all your short is, is yeah, we I mean we've expended it was a one point zero two one million dollar project. We're at the end of it. You guys already gave us 112. So yeah. we're hoping the USDA is gonna find some extra grant money, but it's federal. So um I talked to my engineer and he said it wouldn't hurt to ask you guys so. when, when will you know uh it should be a couple of weeks i mean they we've already given them all of our documents but that's the immediate need for PAC. that's a simple mm -hmm. yeah but, um, um, we have other needs but this is a yeah. immediate. Andrew, yes. when 
Has this already started or not? Started? Yeah, this is the end of it. So basically, this will be able to um, finish up um, putting in the meters into people's yards so their radio reads. So our, we only have one water person. He handles 321 customers. So this is going to give him the ability to drive to pick them up instead of having to manually pick up all those meters and read the numbers and all that. So this is just kind of the end of the water project. So this is Horse Creek Town Creek, which is there close to the turnpike. It's visible. I'd like to ask the commission if they would put this on the 16th. You should have two weeks. You should have an answer, yeah. In two weeks. It's such a it's been, minimal yeah. amount compared to what everybody's asking. Yeah, we, yeah. And if we could put it back on the 16th. And make it, to make you have an answer, and I think we should try to make a decision on this. I'm fine with that. You page on? Yeah. Will you say Andrew, I have one more question. Did your uh, did your engineer try to increase costs because the cost of material went up? Uh, yeah. So this project, as you know, water projects take a long time. So we actually did the bid prior to COVID. So what happened, and that was part of us in 112. What happened is when we actually got all of our documents and the easements. COVID hit and the material of plastic went up. So this was part of that was cost of material. You okay. mentioned that you guys have other projects. I and mean, we do. We um, you know, we are working on we have like 10 flatbed houses. So I'm going to include them in the December reef grant. Um, we do have a gym that um, unfortunately when that windstorm came, we're gonna have to get a new roof, but luckily the insurance company has covered it. So um, after we get that done, we may have some needs as far as just getting that gym. That's our only structural building. We have. When you have something in for us, Bobby. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to council. Like I said, this was just something a quick, but I'll, I'll have something in. I'll have council at, get a priority of some funds and some amounts. Okay. I have on the, on the 16th, yes. that would be, yeah, I'll get it. And I have one more question. Sure. Did the engineer have to change or update any drawings? Yes, yeah, so part of so they have to do that. Yeah, so part of what water and sewer y'all might know, but when you do funding, there's thing called alternate deeps. Mm -hmm. So stuff like at end of the lines that may not be enough funding. So fortunately, um, the contractor went ahead and dug the lines. So that's part of the ninety two hundred short. He went ahead and dug the lines okay. and got that alternate deed up because we have four people at the very end of the line, which is actually parallel to the turnpike. They were able to get on water. They don't have a house there yet. But the funding agency went ahead and let us put the taps in, so they won't have to pay the tax fees when they do build a house. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mount Hope. Yes, sir. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to come over. Uh, Mount Hope, obviously, you know, you guys have. Uh, been been aware of our need for connecting for the bicycle trail. I think that's our, our number one priority. Uh, and by the if we would ask by the 16th, we'd have time as well to give a little more clear uh, request on that. Andy's been working on that project for a number of years. Um, and so that would allow us to connect from the city to the summit, the summit to the gorge and the gorge over here. So bring that connectivity into the park. Uh, and also we, we will be looking for, we, we we're in a ward of um, sidewalk grant, to continue our sidewalk. Uh, that match will be $75,000 for that sidewalk grant. Uh, if council could or the commission could consider, consider that. Uh, we, Again, on the 16th, bringing more information. It's the Department of Transportation grant. We've been awarded. Everything's in place for that. So that would be a tremendous help for us um, with, with help with that. And then we also have needs for our community center as well, which we've got $20,000 from the uh, Beckley Area Foundation to replace some windows, but we were only able to get uh, nine, nine windows for that amount of money. So... Uh, we, and, and there is needs there. So, you know, if, if the commission, you guys would be willing to allow us about 16, I'd probably have you a little better, clearer uh, estimates on on those three major projects. The 75,000 is the match for the sidewalk project, uh, for sure. And um, the, the, the community center sort of in question as to what that would be. And then we do have information for 
on on the bicycle trail or about the trail. I don't know if Andy wants to speak to that. Like why we're here this morning, would you go to like the 16th? Well, we got three o'clock today too. Three o'clock. Uh, yeah, we did, did we put is it the three o'clock? The three o'clock. Yeah. 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 Three o'clock's the PSDs. One, one, one o'clock. o'clock. Okay, there's so many okay. today. Okay, sorry. So okay. aside from the trails, the community center and the sidewalk is the our two primary needs right now. The match for the the grant for our sidewalk. As well as the uh, as some of the repairs in the community center. Do you know what the estimate is for the community center? Is what we what what we would need. Mm -hmm. We would need to finish the windows out, and there's some interior things. This over the last three years, we've been able to put a roof on the building and put a new heating system in, it just from our budget. Uh, but for the windows, it's probably going to be in which I'd like to. Follow up with that to get a solid estimate. Yeah. I would say about thirty thousand dollars somewhere, and that would finish us up in the winter. Can you have that by the sixteenth? Can you have yeah. that by the sixteenth? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. No kill. How are you doing, man? Thank you. This document has changed several times. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to you all for allowing us to uh, come today. I brought Tyler with me because I have done, like Allison suggested, surrounded myself with smarter people. So, <laughs> um, the our priority to ask for funds is for a comprehensive plan. Ours was due in 22. Um, we had a lot of things going on that year with Bill retiring and me taking over. So we missed that that 10 years. So we're kind of on a um, an urgent need to get our comprehensive plan. We have we want to do something a little more robust than what we've had in the past that has just dealt strictly with zoning. We want to look at our planning commission wants to try to go and look at all the zoning in the area. Uh, we have a lot of things that are crazy zone. So we want to work on that and have the help from the people doing the comprehensive plan so that um, we can just have a better plan for our zoning for the things that are happening in the city. Along with that, we have a lot of um, different moving parts in the city now. We have Needles High Park, so we're you know we're doing a lot of things. We have a park director, a rec and park director, so he's done a lot of things with all the parks. Um, we have to, just things going on everywhere. We want to kind of try to bring this together with a strategic plan and an implementation plan. So. We got it. We have a quote for the comprehensive plan. We don't for the other plan yet. So we just kind of guessed that total that would come in about 150,000 for both plans. Um, well, on Roberts Avenue, the next thing is we need drainage and sewer replaced on Roberts Avenue. The problem with the drainage there is causing problems with our road, with that street. It needs paved, but there's no need to repave that street if we can't fix that water problem that's in there. So, And the sewer line needs replaced also, so we'd like to do that at the same time. We can, I don't know if there's restrictions on these funds, but we have our own labor that can do that. Um, so... 60 we could get it for 65,000. If we have to have engineering and um bid and do all that, then it would be more. So I don't know how how these funds have to be used. If anyone knows, I don't know. Do you, Ruth? That's it. Um, I think we can just allocate the money to you and then you can and then we can just okay. Well, okay, yeah, that would be good. That's how we've done it so far. Okay. And then we excuse me. You're talking about ARPA, right? That we yeah. have to have invoices. Yeah, we, we, we just have to have 
proof that you spent that with I just want to make that clear to some right. people has not gave us invoices and it's we don't want to get in any trouble. Oh, yeah, I've gone through an audit now, so I'm probably going to go ahead and some of that too. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the last thing we have is some equipment. We have listed for our public works department um, some zero turn mowers for our, for all the, we have a lot of grass that we cut and the zero turns, we go through those pretty quick. And a heavy duty truck lift for our garage, but also, our sanitary board needs an excavator that we didn't put on here because you all have given us a support letter for the CDS funds. Mm -hmm. uh, but they really, they need that more than the public works needs what they're asking for. So I thought I'd just throw it back in there, even though, because even if we would get the CDS money, that does that we could probably still use another excavator by the time we would get the CBS money. So. And so the total of those projects without the excavator is 291000 You got an excavator without 68, That's what I would say. It's about average. Okay, and are these in priority order? Yes. Good, thank you. And so the excavator would come in at three and then the public works would be at four. Oh, just the same paperwork. Yeah, it's uh it's sixty-eight thousand. So yeah. would it be your third priority then? It's and then the public works. Oh would yes. Be the yes. I'm sorry, I'm misunderstood. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> just I'm just trying to get my notes right. <laughs> yes, that's what it would be. And then I'm I'm not gonna I'm not asking for this because but I wanted to bring it up today on the Virginia Street sidewalks, we are just in that planning phase. So we have to apply for a construction grant, which they told us that we would get. I mean they're pretty sure that we'll get it because of how long we've been working on those sidewalks. Um so that match will be about two hundred thousand. But we don't know when we're going to get the grant, so I don't know. I, I wouldn't even know when to ask for any help with that. But anyway, I just want to bring it up. It's, you know, we're, we're just now having our 30% completion meeting and getting all the design together. So. But I, and I appreciate the letter, too. I think that's ready. I think Allison maybe has that ready for y'all to sign. So okay. I appreciate that letter. Hopefully it'll get something new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you. definitely needed for down there. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are bad. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Yes, Anstead. Mr. Wilson for Anstead. Yeah. That's okay. I'll talk with some time. That's okay, Mike. Wow, I like this. Huh? Thank you. I'm Robert Wilson. I'm the recorder from the town of Manstead, and I'm here representing our request. Uh, the mayor has put these items together, but he went out of town this morning. We have a sidewalk funding issue. We have received Department of Highway grants on Ridge Creek Sidewalk and Page Street Sidewalk. And our part of those sidewalks, the Ridge Creek is 86,745. The Page Street is 99,112. Uh, there are pictures of the sidewalks. The sidewalks were put in by the WPA. I played on them as a child. I'm 69 years old. Uh, they are in dire need of repair. And then we found after remodeling our town hall, uh, the old Anstead Bank building, we added offices upstairs. And with the snow and the ice this winter, we found several leaks. And we have a quote for 24,218. 
And then we have a street issue at Henry Loving, which is in the middle of Lover's Leap. Uh, we need to do stormwater repair and paving, 30725 And on Forlorn Street, we have a stormwater drop-in level that we have a need of two grants. So priority projects for municipal funding, about 242,801,60. Who put these together? You did? Uh, Mr. Todd Moore. Did you know it? Yes, sir. Takes some time to do it. And then we do have some trail issues, but I think that's at one o'clock. And the sidewalks would be brought down to street level 48 inches by and six inch broad. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with Anstead, but those two streets make a horseshoe and then you go on up the hollow. So those people that walk uh, try to utilize these, but they end up on the street. He did say both these projects want to be done in this year and what we done next year they could be separated i think we talked we talked a little bit i don't know whether they, they don't have to be done at one time don't have to be allocated at one time is that correct i believe so i would defer to the mayor to be absolutely okay. sure but i understand we have both the doh grants in place Y'all have any questions? Please? No. Pictures no. worth a thousand. I'm telling you what, I, I, I think it's, I mean, I'm, this stuff I like to see. <laughs> see you back up. Thank you. For thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, I guess it's, is that here? You, you, you want to do the workshop for that workshop? Yeah, it's not part of that workshop. If you don't want to adjourn and get some lunch, come back one. Yep. Motion to adjourn. All right.